I'm Andrea Clem and you are watching Turn to the Stars and today is Monday, June 5th, 2017 and I am recording live from Eustis, Florida. Beautiful, beautiful town here and um, we are out in nature and as you can see just behind me is this beautiful uh, big old oak tree filled with wisdom and we actually have called this tree the shaman tree and as you know I am a professional astrologer and I'm also a shamanic practitioner and that means that I take journeys um, on behalf of others to bring back healing to bring back soul parts to help spirits who are earthbound to make it to their heaven and so just to Without further ado, I do want to thank everyone who's watching Turn to the Stars for your continued support because I have not been on TV in about a year and uh, so I'm so pleased to be back here as you can see how happy I am um, and uh, this is one of my favorite things in the world is, is to bring and deliver the astrology news to you. So today I'm going to be talking about the full moon that's occurring on June 9th and that full moon is at 18 degrees and 55 minutes in Sagittarius and it is one way degree one degree away from being a critical degree in this mutable sign and the nature of this energy is critical so this full moon is right beside Saturn in Saturn's retrograde and I always prepare my show ahead of time. So if you see me looking down, it's only to keep myself on track. I am a Gemini, so I'm easily distracted and um, I wanna just make sure that I'm delivering you the news in the most um, understandable and methodical manner so that you can make use of it in your day-to-day -day life. So, in description of this full moon in Sagittarius, I do just want to hold up a chart here, which I got a little bit uh, wet just before the show, but you can see, um, I don't know if you can see the chart, but um, the full moon is actually right down here, as I was describing, right next to Saturn in Sagittarius and um, so I'm going to be talking in depth about this particular energy and how it is affecting and influencing each of them. However, this one shows a great sense of nervousness that is being felt around the globe. There's a strong need precaution shown by this full moon with Saturn very close to it. Typically, we would be more optimistic, optimistic with such a big influence um, of a, a Sagittarius energy showing up. And one of the things that I want to note is that astrology does show us the inner turmoil we are facing in the world. It shows us the position of the planets around us, how they are communicating with each other, and how they are influencing us here on Earth. I believe more people would be saved with this knowledge if more people would look to astrology, if more people would um, understand that it is not something that you believe in, it's something that you look toward for answers. And just this morning in Florida, in Orlando, Orange County, there were multiple fatal fatalities. Five people shot, including the shooter. Mars, the planet of anger, attack, and cancer in the constellation of cancer um, is, is square, Chiron and Pisces. Now this is what we would call a, um, a separating aspect. Um, however, I do not believe that this is an act of terrorism, but an act of inner anger individually not dealt with being outwardly expressed. So as this full moon approaches, it exaggerates these types of anger outbursts. This full moon approaching is square to Neptune in the eighth house, meaning that it's hard to recover 
or see clearly what the root is of these actions, meaning the suffering and, and the, the things that are underlyingly present that are uh, bringing about these horrifying experiences where people are suffering in um, group size uh, ways. This degree of Sagittarius is equivalent to a time in history of January 1646 when King Charles Stuart, who was of Mary Queen of Scots bloodline, surrendered to the Scots. And I'm using um, A.T. Mann's uh, timeline or uh, graph to look for the time in history where this exact same degrees occurred and what was happening at that time. So I did a little bit of research, which is really a Sagittarius thing, um, to bring this information because this is in alignment with the degrees that this Sagittarius full moon is occurring. The surrender of Oxford occurred at, because uh, uh, as a result, uh, the Battle of Benburb, the first Mormon peace from the British Civil War. So the story of this period is in time is similar to what is happening currently between major powers, meaning major countries and the power that they um, put out. Charles had been negotiating with Irish and foreign powers and was caught and ordered to give up the control of the army, army for 20 years. In this way, this full moon energy is in alignment with current politics. So returning to the chart, there's been a great amount of suffering which is shown by the uh, sun square to Neptune and the full moon conjunct Saturn in square to Neptune on this chart. There's a great amount of focus on the public and on the communities around the world People are watching the news and listening, trying to make some sense out of what may be the strategy behind these attacks in London. As I mentioned earlier about today, June 5th, the Mars and Cancer square Chiron and Pisces is passing and shows the pain and loss, the anger and frustration being felt by the communities who weren't able to protect their citizens. Individuals who are in trouble inwardly because of their anger and resentment can't easily, can easily, actually I wanted to say can easily, get lost and hurt themselves or others without some type of help. So if you see or know someone like this, don't turn a blind eye. Offer your hand or help or tell someone who may be able to help more than you can. The sun in Gemini is in trying to Jupiter and Libra who has just turned direct, and this means meetings amongst neighboring United countries are strategizing of how to restore peace. With the full moon occurring in the fifth house of this universal chart, it raises attention to games, children, and warns us to use great caution in public events. The square to Neptune brings up the massive problem with the epidemic of drugs, especially in our youth. The grand trend in fire from both the applying full moon and Saturn to Uranus and Aries in the ninth house of law, higher learning, and in trying to the north node in Leo in the first house of this chart indicate that the answers lie in trying new methods of approach. We must create, explore, investigate, and test new avenues for better results. There is a diamond soul. This is something that is my life work. And a diamond soul more traditionally is described as a kite in a astrology chart. And it looks exactly like a diamond in its shape. And it does show up in this universal chart for this full moon. And this diamond soul is present in this full moon chart with the point of the diamond on the south node of the moon, indicating that people need to unite and the strength of their unification is what is unbreakable. That south node is in the seventh house of this chart in Aquarius, and the seventh house is about relationships, partnerships, even, um, you know, uh, it could be uh, um, 
people that don't like us. And so with the point of this diamond being in the seventh house, it's pointing to us banding together, uniting together in our relationships in order to Libra, which is a natural uh, ruler of the seventh house, so it carries that flavor of Libra energy. And so it does point toward us being able to build and be stronger by uniting. So the degree of this moon is 18 degrees and 55 minutes and the Sabian symbol uh, that is um, looked to uh, for further information and I do use uh, Linda Hill's I refer to Linda Hill, um, she's an astrologer from Australia. I refer to her Sabian symbols for guidance um, to bring you further information. So thank you, Linda, for this information. Uh, paints a picture of pelicans menaced by the behavior and refuse of men. And so they retreat and seek safer areas for bringing up their young. So the symbol shows we are very focused on our safety, which we should be, especially with this Saturn right next to that full moon. Full moons do highlight experiences. They expand experiences. They bring things to light. We can see at night when the full moon uh, is present. So it's very important, and especially with this critical degrees. So right now the world doesn't feel like a very safe place for many people not just Manchester, England, not just those places that are on our western doorstep, but also in the east, like the people leaving Syria, the gay men in Indonesia and Chechnya, the Coptic people in Egypt. Every continent has its menaces. I typically do not like to go into political conversation on Turn to the Stars. However, I will say we in the U.S. have our own set of menaces with our communities. Seeing this symbol, um, the Sabian symbol that I'm referring to, brings to mind the dual meaning of the word refuse. The refuse of men is not just the rubbish humankind is throwing out right now and the ripple effect that is creating both in our living space and around us. This is also about the whole, the widespread refusal to take responsibility for the truth. This full moon with hot, with, does highlight questions for us like, am I in the right place to achieve growth or are my circumstances holding me back from my true potential? The Sagittarius full moon carries this message that you should look farther beyond the ground you're familiar with to find a place to call home. We can be at home with certain old beliefs because we feel safe with them. This full moon inspires you to question what you've been taught or told. This is for certain a challenging and critical time highlighted by this full moon. Loss is hard and there needs to be time for grieving, but we also need to unite to write better endings to these stories. However, with Saturn, Next to this full moon, it narrows our sight and normally, as I had said before, Sagittarius energy loves to say yes, yes, yes to everything and everyone, but is being shut down by Saturn's limiting energy, limiting presence, very much like the borders between cultures and people. What is clear is that there is a need for fences right now until further resolve is discovered. An example is the recent grounding Saturn of British Airways planes, ninth house far travel, due to a breakdown of communication, Gemini third house, we are getting anywhere because we aren't getting anywhere because we aren't talking to each other respectfully, which is what the North Node in Leo demands. Saturn's energy in Sagittarius can influence a wall of denial. This full moon is tightly semi-sextile Pluto in Capricorn, which illustrates the neighborly relationships this aspect encourages are rooted in power, games, and control. Neptune's realm is imagination and reminds us that we are creative beings and have the ability to 
to get past these unsightly events by creating unity. Neptune is the ruler of the deep, and there is an ocean of love that can break down the walls that divide us. And on a more individual basis, this full moon asks us to dig through the information we have to figure out the truth. So that we can be clear on where we're going, the aspect showing up with this full moon indicates that there is something that we need to figure out because we don't yet understand and that is part of our work. Again, Saturn next to this full moon requires us to master what we touch. Saturn is square to Chiron in Pisces suggests the challenge is to understand and master our emotions. We have to be careful that they don't take us over. Take time to check out what is actually true for you. It's very, very important. Somehow this encourages us to find our way to get to a place where we feel right with our higher selves in conversation with our individual God or higher power. This full moon reminds us that we are individually responsible for finding our movement, our individual meaning in life. On this full moon, June 9th, Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system, goes direct and it is in the constellation of Libra and it's coming out of its long five and a half month retrograde. It began its retrograde journey on February 6th and so forward movement in areas of relationships of all types will happen. Due to the square to Pluto, the challenge is to let go of the judgment and the control. That is going to be highlighted by this awakening, this forward movement of Jupiter. While Jupiter was retrograde, there was refinement taking place within each of us, representing an inner journey of growth, which should have brought more peace and balance into our lives. However, as Jupiter is still square to Pluto, until the beginning part of August, it still leaves the field of influence in all areas of relating open for further refinement. And of course, we're starting to have a little bit of rain. Hopefully I'll get finished with the show before this continues. Well, if it could hold off till we finish. So um, I'm getting closer to the, that point in the show anyway. So today we conclude my show um, and I wanna leave you with more information on the point of the diamond soul configuration showing up on this full moon. And referring to Linda Hill's Sabian symbols, the imagery surrounding this 26 degree, 34 minute Aquarius is of an ancient pottery bowl filled with fresh violets. This symbol displays the necessity to spread beauty, grace, and pureness of motive that inspires feelings of contentment. We are in need of a realignment as a whole to what is beautiful. Problems can be solved easier if a new or simpler approach is taken. Like the picture of the bowl of flowers, surround yourself with a pure environment without the clouds of bad news, negative thoughts or emotions and hold on to your hope and your faith. Very, very important. This will just sustain you with a healthier life and you will be able to bring more joy and happiness to others. So the picture of the flowers is a picture of them gathered together and together they are more beautiful and more sustaining. Be aware that there can also be a lack of sensitivity due to the past experiences. I remind myself of this as well every day. Nobody's perfect, everybody makes mistakes, we're all human. And so don't be a shriveling violet or you may open yourself up to be taken advantage of. Stay strong in your vitality and spirit. Let your voice be heard amongst the group, the North Node in Leo at the base of this diamond or more traditionally, as astrologers call it, a kite. The North Node in Leo creates a sort of oxymoron in this case. Be strong in your self-expression, but stay connected with a group or community united with a common humane cause. Until next time, I want to say thank you to everyone watching Turn to the Stars.
stars. Thank you for your continued support. And as the rain starts to come down, I'm going to finish the show and say to all of you, turn to the stars and you will find your answers there. And until next time, please stay in touch. I can be reached at Andrea at Turn to the Stars. And um, I also want to say to you, please take good care that you be well. There was a Latin phrase I was taught by my daughter, and it goes, um, Cura ut valias. It means take care that you be well. So remember, turn to the stars, and you'll find your answers there. Thank you for watching Turn to the Stars. See you next time. Mm -hmm.